Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I want to uh, just say I uh, hope you had a safe and enjoyable Christmas day with your, your friends and families and everybody was safe and you enjoyed your time. Uh, today we're going to be getting into a very, very interesting topic. I'm, I'm sure you'll find this topic very interesting and that is going to be the LQA. That's the living quarters allowance that is offered by the federal government. And this is by far the best kept secret in the federal government. Um, just imagine taking a job anywhere in the world and the government is going to accommodate your housing and your utilities and give you cost of living adjustments. Uh, I think uh, that's wonderful. You get to pocket your salary and you get to travel the world. You get to see some interesting things and immerse yourself in different cultural groups and foods. So um, without further delay, uh, we'll get into that. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I can guarantee you that there's someone uh, that is interested in getting a federal job, and they will be glad to hear about this wonderful um, hidden secret or gem, if you will, in the federal government. So without further delay, let's get into it. The federal government has jobs all over the world and various jobs in different series, just as though you were working in the States. Uh, a lot of people think that, that you, uh, federal jobs are just equates to United States. Uh, federal jobs are all over the world. Uh, you choose a country, can guarantee you um, there's some type of State Department, Homeland Security, um, the military, there's some form of federal government working within that capacity. Um, just go on to usajobs.gov and within the search bar area, just type in the country that you want and you'll see a slew of in, in jobs that are available. Uh, one uh, key note is to remember is that in order to qualify for the LQA, which is a living quarters allowance, you have to be GS9 or above. Anything beneath that, you will be considered a local hire, uh, someone as a spouse, someone that's working local, and you will not qualify for this benefit. So what is the LQA? The LQA is nothing more than a basic subsidies that the federal government provides to employees and their families to accommodate their living accommodations. That also comes with additional benefits, um, included um, travel, bon uh, travel uh, back to the United States, paid, paid vacation, stuff like that. And we'll get more into that here shortly. Uh, one of the nice things is that they're gonna pay for your housing. They're gonna pay for your utilities. Um, if utilized wisely, you can pocket your salary and still enjoy your time while overseas. But I need to explain each benefit so you do understand uh, there are some pros and cons to it. But overall, it is probably, like I said, one of the best kept secrets in the federal government. LQ, LQA, of course, uh, is different from country to country. Um, the amount you would receive um, varies from country to country. So the, to get a, a best gauge so you and your family can make that determination is go on to the State Department website and type in living quarters allowance and it'll tell you uh, with a family what that would be for and for a single person what the amount would be. Um, I lived personally in uh, Vicenza, Italy. So uh, to give you an example of, of that for a single person it's about 30, 36, I'm sorry, 30, yes, 36,000 for a single person that could be utilized for your housing. If you have a family, then it's 36,900. What that basically means is the government is gonna tack on that amount to your salary and you'll receive that every month as a subsidy. You have to live within that amount. So for example, uh, if you find a home or apartment that costs, let's say, $2,000 a month and your utilities is $600 a month, then, you know, your, your live, as long as that amount is less than what you allotted for, <clears throat> then you will qualify for the program. Uh, each agency has a, a housing office so you can work with the local people to find a home uh, or apartment. It's a very, very exciting thing to do. Previously, we talked about um, the, the cost of the, the LQA for housing um, and what would they'll pay on top of that. The other thing that they will pay is the cost of living allowance, cost of living formerly known in the workplace as a COLA. And what that basically is, is the federal government is going to pay P 
pay you an additional stipend to offset um, the country that you're residing in. So for, let's say, for example, the difference between the US dollar and the Euro, uh, let's say is about maybe 20 cents or, or more. Um, some families can see as much as $350 or $450 extra every month to offset with the, the cost of the dollar value for that country. Of course, um, the market changes from time to time, so expect that to fluctuate. One of the other categories that cover, as I mentioned before, is your utilities. So that includes your lighting, your electricity, your water, um, your gas, um, even wood, any wood, wood chips, uh, pellets that you would to heat your home, um, they will cover that cost. In the past, they have reconciled at the end of every year. Some agencies does it a little bit differently but the federal government generally will have you provide all your receipts of everything that you have paid. If it is less than you actually, um, your, your uh, utilities were less than you were allotted, then of course um, they'll pay you the difference because you were allotted a certain amount. If your utilities were actually more than you actually paid, then there has to be an offset. That's what we call it reconcile, right? One of the additional benefits to resigning overseas with the federal government is called the OTEX. And the OTEX is your overseas uh, tour extension. So initially when you take a position overseas, generally they'll offer you a two-year tour. Um, at the end of that two-year tour, if they really like your work performance, they like your personality, they think you're a valid asset to the team, they'll extend you for an additional three years to make it five years. What that basically means, you get your good success evaluation. They provide you with uh, this OTEX. You sign it, it's approved by a higher chain of command. They basically will give you two weeks paid leave on top of your regular leave to go back to your place of origin. Um, they'll pay for your plane ticket for you and your family to kind of give you a break from um, your, your work environment and kind of recharge your batteries, go back and see family members and friends, and then you come on back. In the past, people have stayed more than five years. Uh, it is possible, um, but yet difficult. Um, it, you basically would have to be in a position that they find it difficult to replace. Uh, so some people have stayed beyond the five-year rule, which is not a bad thing. You, if you really enjoy the overseas environment, uh, you need a two-year break. So you basically you'll do your five years, five-year max, and then you will, um, come back to the States for two years and we call it reset. After the reset, you can apply to come on back and you can try to initiate another two year uh, period and hopefully into another contract. Um, there are some uh, negatives there in, in the sense that um, you're away from your families and your friends. But if you're like me that enjoy traveling, um, being abroad, I, like I said, I think is one of the best kept secret. And I'm gonna give you one last example. And I want you to do the math here. If you, let's say, was making $70,000 a year and you just blew $20,000 just in traveling and enjoying your life overseas and you saved $50,000 and you stayed five years, you know, do the math. That This is money that you're pocketing um, that you can come back to the States with and buy, purchase a home, pay off some debt or whatever. You can still have a good time and save some money while working abroad. In the United States, you're not going to offer that. You're going to, regardless of where you're going to relocate, live in, you're going to have to pay for your housing expenses. Well, I won't take it too much of your time. This is a very short video. As I always mention, I uh, hope you found it informative. It is not all inclusive. Uh, there's a lot to it. So if you have additional comments or remarks or questions, please leave it down in the comments below. And please don't like forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate the time watching watching my video. Thank you for all those that are supporting me, and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a safe and enjoyable day.